Hello. This recording is about advanced DRAM organizations. The classic RAM has low bandwidth because you need to send the row address then to send the column address in order to get one, uh, one data word. Modern DRAMs usually have row buffer. An entire row is accessed and stored in this row buffer. For example, the fast page mode can supply successive words from this row buffer with reduced latency. Here, the row address is sent, the column address is sent, then we get one data word. Then we only need to change to give a new CAS and a new column address and we get another data word without the need to resend the row address because the entire row is in the row buffer so we only change the column. This is one early optimization. More recent DRAMs are synchronous DRAM, SDRAM. Uh, these DRAMs have a counter that increments the column address using a clock signal. Uh, after sending the row address, the column address is sent with CAS. Th the, this counter has a clock signal, so it can increment the column address so we can uh, get successive columns from the row buffer. Uh, at the beginning, the synchronous RAM was single data rate. Uh, with each clock, I mean this clock that increments the counter, which each, each clock we get one uh, word we read or write one word uh, w w the double data rate rate is DRAM uh, increment the counter twice at the rising edge of the clock and at the falling edge of the clock so we get double data rate we get uh, two data words every cycle and there is also quad data read, QDR SDRAM, where there are uh, two separate lines, two separate buses, one for the input data and one for the output data. Each of them is double data rate, so we get four quad data rate. This is an example modern DDR SDRAM. Uh, this is a 32 mega by 8 bit by 4 banks. Here are the 4 banks. Uh, each of them is organized into 16k rows, 1k columns, and 16 bits in each cell. Uh, here we have a 16-bit address. At one time, uh, 14 bits are used to select the row and two bits are used to select the bank. Then we have, then uh, this bus is used to send the column address and uh, uh, this column address is used to select one of the 1K columns. One bit is used to select one of the two halves of each cell. Uh, each cell is 16 bits, but the data bus, the external data bus, is 8 bits wide. So 
uh, this line is needed to select the lower half or the upper half of the uh, 16 bits. Uh, I'll zoom in. This slide shows a magnified view of the same uh, chip. Here you have four banks. Each bank is uh, 16K by 1K and each cell is 16 bits. There is a refresh counter that selects w uh, one row and one uh, bank at a time uh, to have it refreshed. The, here we have a multiplexer either if we have a refresh circ, uh, cycle or an access cycle. There are four row address latches so the four banks can be accessed independently and uh, there are decoders to decode the 14 bit address into 16k select signals. Now uh, also we have column address counter counter slash slash uh, the column address the initial column address is stored here and uh, it can be incremented in synchronization with the clock. There are also column decoders to select from the column address one of the 1k columns. This table shows the progress of DRAM generations with time from 1980 to 2012. Notice that the chip size uh, kept or the capacity increased exponentially with time the cost per gigabyte decreased exponentially with time. Uh, the time to access a new row and column also decreased from 250 to uh, 35 nanoseconds. Also, the time to access a new column from the same row uh, decreased from 150 to 0.8. Notice that the improvement here is much better than the improvement here. And this improvement is illustrated in this graph. Uh, this is the improvement in uh, uh, accessing a new row and this is the improvement in accessing a new column. To summarize, uh, modern DRAMs use uh, raw buffer that allows several words to be read and refreshed in parallel. Synchronous DRAM allows the four consecutive accesses in burst without needing to send each address. The counter keeps generating the next column address, which improves the performance. Also, uh, modern DRAM organizations have multiple banks that allow simultaneous access of multiple DRAMs, which also improves uh, bandwidth. Now, let's go to some calculations. Uh, how we usually increase the memory bandwidth. This is the basic organization. This is a one-word wide memory organization. Uh, the processor ca ca can read to the cache one memory word. Now, to get a block of four words or 16 bytes in this organization, uh, we need uh, the miss penalty or the time to access this 16 byte block is we need to bring four words, so we need to be repeat this thing four times. Uh, 
uh, let's assume that we need one cycle to send the address uh, 15 cycle latency to access the DRAM and one cycle to get the data on the data bus which the total is uh, 68 bus cycles the bandwidth in this case to get 16 bytes we need 68 cycles and this is only 0.24 bytes per cycle for the second organization let's assume that we have a wider memory and the memory the bus the cache everything is wide of course this is more expensive and we can get a four word in one cycle so the miss penalty is one cycle to send the address 15 cycles latency and in the last cycle we get four words so the total is 17 bus cycles and the bandwidth is 0.94 bytes per cycle <coughs> the third organization uh, let's assume that we have multiple banks and the data the four words are distributed on the four banks then uh, the miss penalty will be one uh, cycle to send the address to the four banks 15 uh, cycles latency and then in order to collect from the same bus four words we need four cycles which is 20 bus cycles here also we have good bandwidth now for the modern double data rate is the rams we need one uh, cycle to send the address let's also assume that we need 15 cycles latency but in the double data rate uh, we get a word every half cycle so the total is 18 cycles and also this is good bandwidth this is the end of this recording